आपकी इजाजत हो तो हम लोग शुरू करें सर जी बिल्कुल आपको एम आई ऑडेबल थी गुड मॉर्निंग ऑन बी हाफ ऑफ रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट सेल आई वेलकम आवर इन्वाइटेड गेस्ट स्पीकर फॉर टूडेज इवेंट प्रोफेसर संदीप वर्मा जी ही इज सेक्रेटरी एस सी आर बी एंड आई वेलकम ऑल द डीन्स कन्वीनर्स डिस्टिंग गेस्ट डियर फ्रेंड्स एंड मीडिया पर्सनल्स वी आर एबल टू कंडक्ट दिस प्रोग्राम फॉर फैकल्टी मेंबर्स बिकॉज ऑफ मोटिवेशन एंड मेंटरिंग ऑफ आवर ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर सर प्रोफेसर विनय कुमार पाठक जी he has become a he has been a constant source of inspiration for all of us uh, he is a renowned academician and a very strong administrator uh, he was instrumental in establishing research and development cell as one of the many other cells in the university i also welcome professor sandeep kumar malhotra sir i can see him uh, sir welcome uh, to the event sir swagat hai aapka sandeep sir uh, has retired uh, from uh, zoology department of allahabad university so sir welcome uh, to this event and uh, today <laughs> thank you sir and today we have uh, professor sandeep verma with us uh, professor sandeep verma is currently uh, he is serving as secretary of science and engineering research board serb department of science and technology india and he is also professor at the indian institute of technology kanpur his research interests include bio inspired material chemical neuroscience and new antibiotics with about 200 publications till date his work has been recognized by the shanti swarup bhatnagar prize a uh, distinguished alumnus award of banaras hindu university jc bose fellowship dae outstanding investigator award and swarna janti fellowship to name a few he is an elected fellow of indian national science academy indian academy of sciences and national academy of sciences india he is a member of the governing boards of indo us science and technology forum and indo indo german science and technology center new delhi he is an associate editor of chemical communications rsc uk and serves on the editorial advisory board of chem biochem ville and journal of peptide science ville sir we are uh, delighted to have you uh, for this first event and uh, thank you for giving a uh, kind consent on the short notice and i request you uh, to address uh, all the faculty members and i hope that this will ignite all of us including me to put up the new grants and also will learn uh, grant writing skills from you over to you sandeep sir uh, thank you very much uh, professor gupta has uh, very uh elaborate introduction i thank you for that uh let me give my greetings to honorable vice chancellor professor patak and all colleagues in the, who have who are participating in this uh, online session uh, i am so thankful to all of you for making time on this saturday afternoon uh to come together and discuss a bit about what is going on in research and development scene in india as well as what is anticipated as we move along and try to fulfill the national needs with our uh, r&d and science and technology initiatives so uh, if i may start by uh, presenting uh, sharing my slides i hope everybody is able to see my slides so so what i have planned today is to tell you about uh, funding opportunities and uh, tell you a bit about project writing skills which are essential to gain funding from a variety of government organizations and one particularly which is science and engineering research board which i represent that belongs to the department of science and technology ministry of science and technology new delhi uh as you already know uh, told by professor gupta i also hold affiliation with iit kanpur and at the moment i am on lien to the government of india uh, heading scrp so uh, just to tell you a bit about science and engineering research board it is a statutory body which was formed in 2008 under the department of science and technology through proclamation of indian parliament we are at the moment uh, one of the most versatile science management system where we give research funding 
we monitor, we evaluate investigators, we try to support their new ideas, disruptive ideas, and translational values that would come out of your research endeavors. We use uh, modern science management practices, and you would be very uh, surprised and also happy to know that we are one of the largest funding agency at the moment, where close to 145,000 investigators are registered with SCRB, and they use our uh, online platform for transaction of projects, which includes everything from uh, submission of projects to interacting with SCRB to release of funds and so on and so forth. So what essentially is our mandate is to create the synergy, create a synergy between academic institutions, R&D laboratories, and industry, so that we can bring in a number of uh, research programs. We can bring in a number of awards, fellowships, conference support, reskilling workshops, which can create the R&D ecosystem, which is going to be increasingly of value as we move, move toward a developed nation and as we move toward fulfilling the requirements and the aspirations of our citizens through national missions of science, technology, and innovation. So if you look at SERB R&D footprints, just this slide basically tells you that where, where exactly we are at the moment. We operate quite a number of individual research grants. We have uh, a number of future ready and new programs whereby we are able to fund individual or a group of investigators in areas starting from astrophysics all the way to environmental science, biology all the way to cond condensed matter physics. And very recently, we have also started program on quantitative social science that includes economics, that includes cognitive science, and anything that has to do with data, big data, and, and these uh, quantitative social science areas, we have started funding that uh, uh, 2021 onward. We are also in the business of creating national centers where you really require large footprint. You require large footprint of uh, hardware, for, for creating of national facilities where research can be accelerated and augmented. And we have, and I will come back and tell you what we have done recently in this particular area. We, we look at grants, we look at the research, and we look at the results that come out and try to support our investigators who are interested in bringing in translational approach to their research problems. Can they start uh, using their research for patents. If they have gotten a patent, can they translate their research? Can they connect to an industry and create startups, take help of technology incubators and bring up their own startups and sort of start contributing to the wealth generation in this country in terms of suitable employment, in terms of bringing in their, their research from bench to bedside or from bench to marketplace that is also being supported by SCRB. And we also offer quite a number of fellowships and science and technology awards to our investigators who are doing exceedingly well. So this is almost like pat on the back, but government is interested in bringing out the right talent, supporting and nurturing them to an extent that they feel comfortable delivering the right kind of science, cutting edge science, disruptive science to us so that we can create the right kind of movement, a forward movement in terms of global competitiveness in science and technology. We are also looking at inclusiveness and equity. We are working with disadvantaged sections of our society, which have been lagging behind. So we have specific programs that bring in inclusivity, which brings, brings in equity to our funding opportunity, which not only includes socially disadvantageous population or citizens, but it also includes gender parity, because I will show to you in a minute that we have been noticing a trend of having less number of our women, uh, women researchers in R&D ecosystem. So we now have specific programs, which enables female researchers to come forward with the right kind of competition, we are have we have started giving them fellowships. We have started giving them research uh, uh, support so that they can also start contributing to the same level as everybody else. And that is uh, a very important aspect of our R and D funding opportunity. SCRB is also uh, connected to interministerial missions where we work with, say, MITE. We work with MHRD and a number of institutions, uh, ministries such as Ayush Ministry and bring in or support their research programs that can be taken forward with the help of our uh, specific sort of uh, interventions that are endemic to SCRB. 
if you look at uh, our research schemes portfolio and this is just a bird's uh, eye view you can go to our website and you would find that i'm only but showing you a few programs which are really highlighted in our uh, total r and d footprint but there are many more programs uh, that you may be interested in right so we have research grants where we have co research grant for large scale funding there is no uh, end to or there is no upper limit to funding it could be a 70 lakh grant or it could be 2.5 crore grant we don't really bother about it there is a startup research grant for young faculty who just join an institution and we have serb supra i'll talk to you about this in a minute where we look for research projects where you would tell us or where investigators would tell scrb there hey there is a 50% chance of uh, failure in this project so you bring in such an exciting idea where inevitably there is a 50-50 chance 50-50 percent chance of success or failure and we are okay with it as long as your research plan is robust and you have a plan b in your mind we are supporting such kind of blue sky projects which will bring us enormous value because there are projects where you know that you will be successful there are projects where you know you may not be successful but if you are going to be successful the dividends the benefits are far reaching and that's what we are looking at we we have fellowship and awards uh, such as jc bose fellowship ramanujan fellowship and whole bunch of fellowships where we are bringing in foreign or nri professors to our institution so that we can benefit from their knowledge and expertise sir vajra is one such such a fellowship scheme for our nris and overseas citizens of india we also have sir star award science and technology award for research where we celebrate those those investigators who have done exceedingly well in research we give them personal money as well as research money so that they can keep making us uh, proud with their research uh, and development we have outreach activities where we work on equity and empowerment we have sir tare program where we specifically look, specifically look at uh, college teachers who want to reskill themselves so college teachers who want to reskill themselves are welcome to to get support from tare program we give them support for the summer months of their research uh, stay in a in a bigger institution so that they can be connected to a mentor who can guide them uh, in their research endeavors we also support seminars symposia and other kind of reskilling workshops and you are quite welcome to look at it and i may also uh, give you a bit of hint about these programs in subsequent slides there is a uh, a very focused effort at the moment that the research being done in an institution should directly be connected to industry either it should be connected to an industry or we should give enough money to an investigator so that they can start a small startup with their research idea with their research success a patent or a copyright they have obtained say on a software so we we offer you what is called a sub tetra but your your patent or your copyright or your idea should have been supported by a sub project so first you have to compete for a normal research project you have to do well in your research project and with those ideas those results we offer you unrestricted sum of money in sub tetra i'll talk about that in a minute when what i mean by unrestricted is that we do not give you any boundary for expenditure if you are given 15 lakh rupees you can travel you can hire a person you can buy a small equipment you can use it for consumable you can you just you can use it to get an expert or a consultant from elsewhere so it's entirely up to you how we would, you would use that money so that is tetra we'll talk to you about fund for industrial research engagement serb fire and imprint program which we operate with the help of mhrd so these these are a bouquet of programs which are within the research scheme portfolio of scrb and there are many more as i had mentioned so please do take some time visit our website and learn about the programs which are important for you which are directly in line of what you would like to do or where you would like to support uh, to have support for your ideas if you look at data from 1920 i'm not showing you 2021 data because it is little less because of the pandemic but looking at 2019 2020 data what you see is that we handle an enormous number of trans 
submissions in a year close to 35000 submissions and we give lot of awards lot of support across the disciplines in a variety of programs with 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 the number of sanctions in a year exceeding 11000 <clears throat> and we have a mandate to spend about 1000 crores so 1000 crores is being used by scrb under my supervision guidance whatever you wish to call so that the ecosystem of r and d becomes more robust over a period of time and if you, if i were to give you a sort of overview that looking at about 145 or uh, 145000 investigators we get excellent crowdsource ideas which are disruptive or translational in nature and we support everything under so almost 150 uh, 145000 investigators their ideas and project through a highly efficient e management system of projects and finances so everything is audited everything is valued so even our conversation between the the investigator and the crb is totally online with chatbots or with real scientists and you would have excellent support as you navigate through our research schemes research projects which is research funding and you get ample support to to get to the destination so this is what i wanted to give you a brief overview of the number of projects and the current status of the money being spent on so many investigators so let me walk you through some of the programs that have come up recently which some of which might interest you or some of uh, these programs you may look at them you may contact people around you may become a co-pi if not a pi you may want to become a co-pi or you may want to become involved in these research processes one such program that was launched in 2019 was serve supra and this supra name was given by us for scientific and useful profound research advancement so serve supra the definition of such projects are that you are looking at a transformative and disruptive research concept you have to have the the conviction that this is an excellent idea with a sufficient you know probability of failure but if you were to get success in such project the 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 dividends are going to be exceedingly beneficial for our system and that will cat it would catapult india into the dominant global presence in niche research area so what when we created this program it you would be very happy to know that it was picked up by the pmo pmo as part of their 100 days of science and technology agenda and it was followed quite closely by the pmo and we were very happy to show that close to 55 projects supra projects were selected in totally you know cutting edge area of research which was brought out by our investigators so you may wish to look at search supra these these calls come every year and you may want to get involved with people who already have supra project and you want to become a co-pi or work within the ambit of the supra project that somebody has this is what i was talking to you about that if you have a project from scrb what we offer you is is technology translation award so if you have gotten a patent or if you've gotten a copyright from a crb project we we offer you serb tetra which can, so this 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 copyright can come from a number of projects right which is shown here so you distill out for serb tetra award and what you eventually find is that we are looking for the right pis who have identified an industry partner who have identified a technology translation incubator for translation of their technology for the translation of their patent and once you have done all that you bring your idea to us and we will be able to provide you on a competitive basis of course everything is competitive that we will be able to provide you unstructured support to develop a prototype or a product or push it into your startup that you wish to create as a result of your patent or as a result of your copyright so it's an excellent excellent program where faculty members who are hoping to become entrepreneur in technology you know a uh, diffused area you are welcome to look at Serpetra. so there there are steps you would be able to be i mean you would be able to be uh, you would be able to read scrb website and get the right pointers in the right direction if you want to become one of the tetra awardee in in near future this is one of our flagship programs that was launched last year in October by our Honorable Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Harshwardenji, where we were trying to mitigate the gender 
so, uh, mitigate gender parity within SCRB R&D programs. What we found that it, the, the numbers were not quite matching up. So what we created was SER Power, and here Power stands for promoting opportunities for women in exploratory research. So this is women power, women power in R&D. And what we have done here is that we have developed two distinct mechanisms of support. One is SER Power Fellowship. We give fellowship to those individuals, those female researchers who have done exceedingly well, and we give them 15,000 rupees per month as personal money and also research funding for their idea for their uh, uh, for for their project and we also give larger power sir power research grants if they do not want fellowships they can go for a 60 lakh or a 30 lakh research grant over a period of three years and the competition is only between women researchers so that is the hallmark of power that we have taken out so women can compete in open field but they, if they choose to be competing within female researchers, that is also possible by SER power. So we give them twice the benefit for an open competition as well as a competition where only women researchers are participating. So this was, again, appreciated quite a bit in the government circles. And we have been able to show that there is going to be an equitable distribution of funding patterns for female researchers. This is one of the uh, Star Award, uh, Sir Star Award, which is Science and Technology Award for Research, is for our not so young scientists. The age group is between 40 and 50 years. And here again, we offer a personal fellowship of 15,000 rupees per month and a research grant of 10 lakh uh, rupees per, per year for three years, where they bring in their excellent project and we give close to 30 awards per year. So here, what you have to do is that you have to finish one of the SCRB project. You have to be, you have to get an excellent grading in your SCRB project. Then and only then you are going to be eligible for Cert Star. And I'm very happy to share with you that we have already had uh, two cycles of Cert Star award. And the, the kind of investigators we have selected, both women and men, they are outstanding. They are. We are very proud of their achievements, and we are totally committed to support as long as possible that I mean and, and also as long as they continue to produce quality science quality research in science and technology I was talking to you about industry engagement and self fire represent uh, represents one of such such engagement with industry so what we do here is it is a public private partnership agreement between industries it could be multinational it could be national industries where we are connecting these industries to academic institutions to national laboratories in one is to one funding mode so this particular picture i'm showing my uh, uh, laser pointer here is where we signed an mou with intel organization so intel bangalore came to has come together with scrb so they are going to put x amount of money and we are going to put x amount of money but the but the fun part here in this fire engagement is that the research problems are going to come from industry. The investigators can look at the bouquet of problems that are going to be presented by industry. You look at those problems, you create your own group and see if you are able to tackle those problems which are posed by a, posed by a particular industry through frugal innovation, through your own, uh, through your own ideas. And that is a, a very, very interesting way to get industry on board for research funding. That is a quite, quite an innovative way to bring in technology that is relevant to society, that is relevant to industry, being solved by faculty members who belong to academic institutions and who belong to national laboratories. So we are hopeful that in next three to five years, we are going to create a, a good network where industry and academic institutions will have more faith on each other. And they would come together to solve problems which are emerging, which are of high value, which will bring in high value of uh, technological technological competence and translation. Serb so Vortex is a, is a new idea that we have uh, uh, recently started because what was happening or what would eventually happen even in an institution that if you are not talking to people for a long period of time, you just do not know what is latest in your area. So to, to sort of feed your own mind, to feed your own thoughts, you have to have interaction with people 
who are better than you and what we have created here is sir vortex and vortex stands for vision oriented thought exchange so if you if you can think of a given discipline say astrophysics or say material science you can bring in new ideas you can push funding agencies such as scrb that okay hey here is a priority area here are new ideas why are you not funding these priority areas so we would like to support such kind of thought exchange among investigators among ac academicians who can bring in these kind of concepts and that would strengthen the, the idea is that this whole the, the the process of thought exchange is going to strengthen the review process it is going to strengthen the sectoral segregation and landscaping of thematic areas of research and eventually with your help with the help of investigators we can develop r and d indicators that are going to be very essential or effective in monitoring sanction projects in creating new funding agent, uh, funding opportunities which in which are in priority areas of research so sir vortex if you get an opportunity please be on the lookout of our website you are welcome to participate in such thought exchanges and sort of learn from your peer group learn from your from your peer group what is latest and where the field is heading whatever interest you in terms of uh, r and d whatever interest you in terms of new new uh, uh, knowledge that is being created across the world and across india i was talking to you about national facilities which are being created by scrb and i'll i'm very proud to share that just just this year we were able to create four national facilities on cryo electron microscopy and these facilities are uh, cl close to 30 crore uh, uh, funding each and we have created four facilities in bose institute in calcutta and what we have mandated is that two institutions from northeast region uh, iit guwahati and a certain universities from northeast are going to get dedicated amount of time on bose institute machine in terms of their uh, research problems iit bombay has will have an uh, will have a machine which is going to serve national center for cell science and icer pune iit Kan kanpur incidentally also got a machine which is going to serve not only iit kanpur but banaras hindu university and csr institute a central drug research institute in lucknow and iit madras which got the fourth machine is going to be working with rajiv gandhi center for biotechnology and icer tirupati and we hope that this massive funding that has been created in structural biology is going to be you know sort of working in favor of all biologists and and you would be able to get dedicated time on these facilities for your research work so it's a, it's a massive facility you can talk to iit kanpur because that's the closest in case you have research problems that are set for the usage of cryo electron uh, uh, microscopy we keep on giving i mean other than regular calls other, other than regular calls we keep on giving high priority calls for research uh, problems and in this uh, cycle alone after april we have been able to bring out three specific calls or three special calls one was, was in energy transformation and storage and this this particular call is going to address three different uh, three different verticals within energy transformation first one being electrochemical systems for microgrid installations we are also looking at technologies where utility scale high capacity batteries can be developed and finally we are also looking at transparent photovoltaics for devices and surface integration the last one is very interesting because if you remember that these these larger solar battery panels they actually not only occupy space but underneath these panels you would not have any sunlight so if you were to put these panels in say agricultural land the the land underneath is going to become uncultivatable because there is going to be no sunlight so what we are asking our researchers is can we create transparent photovoltaic devices that you you put your solar cell yet you get sufficient sunlight underneath so that the cultivation can still go on uninterrupted so these three points are going to be tackled or addressed by transformation and storage we are working on or we have a call on climate by uh, informatics we are where we are where we are going to use artificial intelligence and machine learning approaches to address geo hazards weather and climate prediction so you can imagine the whole big data concept that that is related to weather forecasting that relates to 
hundreds of years of weather data that is available with the med department you are now going to be able to get that data from the med department use the algorithms of artificial intelligence and machine learning to bring together the predictive analytics that is going to be useful for geohazard forecasting it is going to be useful for climate uh, climate predictions and so on and so forth uh, we also plan to create national biosafety facilities uh, subsequent to the pandemic we realized that we do not have containment zones in various you know sections of our country where you can contain these viruses you can culture the vi these viruses and study these viruses anything that is new has to be studied so what we are proposing is creation of 10 biosafety level 3 facilities including absl which is animal animal handling biology uh, biological safety biosafety level 3 and 4 facilities in next two years so what you would find in few years from now that the entire country is to be dotted by national facilities in biosafety containment which are going to be funded by scrb so it's an ambitious plan the call is going to come out in maybe another 10 days time and of course you are welcome to look at it you are welcome to get connected with people who are going to approach us for biosafety level facilities so that if you have interest in virus based research or in pathogen based research you can use these uh, containment zones and containment facilities for your research uh i i would like to tell all of us that this is a very important slide for all of you or at least wherever i go and uh, and, and also uh, talk about scrb you may wish to sort of uh, look at this particular website which is prism.scrbonline.in if you were to go to this website you can actually figure out any project that is happening at the moment in india who it is being worked out by which institution what is the abstract of the project what equipment this particular investigator has asked in this project so that you can you can know that if iit kanpur has 100 project running at this moment what equipment they have asked in these the in scrb supported project so sir prism is what you can call as the perfect democratization of science and science funding at the click of the button you can find out what exactly is going on in the entire country and can i be part of this pi so emails are available pi name is available you can contact these pis you can connect to this network and make use of the public funding that is being offered through scrb and you can be part of this uh, the the whole movement of r and d in science technology and innovation so it is a real time portal means anything that happens yesterday is going to be updated today so we have made it real real time and it is an excellent excellent portal i assure you uh, you you may really like to go through it you may you you will find a uh, uh, quite interesting concepts that are going on or that are being funded by scrb so this entire data what we have done is that we have taken the data from our legacy files and we used close to 8 lakh pages of metadata and we have uh, uh, put together under this portal and if you if i'm sure some of you have written prism.serbonline.in for really looking at what is uh, happening in scrb and rnd this is an interesting concept or this interesting program that we started which is serb accelerate vigyan and here i am showing you two uh, stalwarts who have been very unflinchingly supporting our initiatives our honorable prime minister modi ji uh, where uh, he gave us the message i'm not going to read it and also our honorable minister for science and technology where both of them are supporting where both of them are telling us that it is time to bring people together to address research problems so the name we have given to this particular initiative is samuhan where we bring people together to address missions to address national missions of importance and abhyas or reskilling upskilling of individuals who have been trained say 10 15 years back but at the moment to become relevant to become uh, uh, knowledgeable about cutting edge developments you have to have skill development you have to have what we call as abhyas so samuhan and abhyas this is this particular program has its own website i wish to i wish to tell request all of you to please go through it we have numerous upskilling and reskilling workshops where you can guide your students and if you yourself are interested in learning say for, about say machine <laughs> learning you could you could be i mean you would be able to to get the right kind of program of your interest 
this is uh, outreach we we also outreach to communities uh, serb has this mandate that we have to bring citizen science and science to citizens so we have to develop scientific temper in citizens and we have to bring citizens to think about science as being an important vertical of their life so here what we have done is that we have paired with indian national science academy for their uh, for, for an outreach program and three verticals that we have developed first one is called as the as future planning future calling where we look at key key scientific problems and the challenges that lie ahead we talk about r and d hotspots where we would like to identify people where we can pair up mentor and mentee and bring out the synergy of fellows in guiding people who want to nurture or who want to upscale their talent upscale their skills and and under a uh, low resource capability so if you have a low resource you could still get money from us and create these r and d hotspots and you have to contact insa for this we have given them close to 2.5 crore rupees to create such kind of initiative and finally we have scientific social responsibility you may have heard of a term which is called as corporate social responsibility where big companies are supposed to put out a limited sum of money to to for scientific responsibilities but what we are saying here is that even as a scientist even as a technologist even as a person who is teaching and doing research you have a responsibility to mix with the communities to mix with the society to mix with the social fabric available and raise the scientific temper you have to make people think like a scientist so that they start understanding what we do in our teaching rooms teaching classrooms and our research laboratories people should understand so they should also behave like a scientist they should have a rational thought not everybody would get msc or phd or ma or phd but you start thinking rationally you start thinking in a logical way and that is what we call as think like a scientist so these three verticals are very important for our outreach and you are welcome to look at insa website and one very uh, nice program that we started which was called as science through my eyes right so we told students that you take your mobile phone anything that appears to you of scientific value you take a picture or you create a one minute video just one minute video and you send it to us we have given awards of 10000 rupees or consolation prizes so that you ignite some minds in looking around us spotting things which are relevant to uh, relevant to science and engineering and take a picture or create a video so that is what we call as science through my eyes now i'm going to tell you just a bit about national missions and where we are involved where dst is involved in what we call as active deep tech domain so active deep tech tech domains i'm not going to tell the value of these pictures i mean you are starting all the way from artificial intelligence to drones to blockchain to biotech and say chip making and what not basically we are looking at disruptive technology so looking at disruptive technologies which are based on stem science technology engineering mathematics and medicine which are going to have profound impact on our people on our society that interests us and that is where government is putting a lot of money to bring in the right kind of expertise the first such national mission is cyber physical systems where we government has put in about uh, 3660 so about 3600 crores worth of money to bring in technology innovation hubs to to create application innovation hubs around these these topics of hybrid systems artificial intelligence system engineering sensors internet of things industry 4.0 cloud and cognitive computing and whole lot of systems where cyber and physical systems connect so cyber means you know your cyber world and physical systems mean your say your refrigerator right so if you can connect your mobile to your refrigerator that is already a cyber physical system if your thoughts can be connected to a chip that is a cyber physical system so all this is going to be supported by this uh, close to 4000 work of national mission which is the cyber physical system and what we have done here is that we are working through what is called as hub and spoke model for interconnected research possibilities where we have technology innovation hubs in various iits various institutions and we have also created sectoral application hubs so for example if you have artificial intelligence as one of the 
technology innovation hub. Now, artificial intelligence can be used in energy sector. It can be used in law ministry. It can be used in energy, petrochemicals. So, so when you look at this diffusion of artificial intelligence, that is tech innovation, you can look at sectors where application of artificial intelligence can be found. So based on technology innovation, based on sectoral application, 25 such hubs have been created already. Money has been distributed. And we are looking at innovation. We are looking at tech development, skill development, partnerships, and eventually creation of a national domain of network that is going to bring together knowledge on a single platform. So, so that is our uh, eventual goal. And here are some of the names which I've already mentioned. So uh, it could be even technology for underwater exploration. Some of you may have read the newspaper that government has just also announced a deep ocean mission that can very well be connected to technologies that are applicable to underwater exploration. So you are welcome to go through websites that talk about in a national mission on cyber physical systems. You can identify institutions. Uh, for example, IIT Kanpur has a national uh, this technology innovation hub on cybersecurity. So you can talk about talk to them and talk to other hubs for if if it interests you. The, this is a, a mission that is going to be uh, out in the open very soon, where about 8,000 crores are being promised for next five years on quantum technology and applications. And this is going to be revolutionary because 10, 20 years from now, all our computers, all our handheld mobile phones are going to be transitioning from whatever we have right now to quantum-based systems. So quantum-based mobile computing, quantum-based mobile telephony, quantum based computers, communication, encryption, you know, you just name it, it is going to be pervaded by quantum and where you are going to move from binary systems to quantum based technology and quantum based uh, applications in a variety of, of innovations in a variety of infrastructure setup. So we are looking at uh, quite a bit of uh, technology generation worth 8000 crores uh, through innovation and in startup. And as this mission unveils. I'm sure some of you will get excited about it. Some of you would like to know a bit more about it. So keep tuned yourself to our websites and learn more about all these national missions that are going to coming up in, in short period of time. So I'm going to quickly tell you, how do you write projects? So I have told you a lot of opportunities what are available with us. Now we have to also know that if opportunities are available, how do we write or how do we approach these opportunities with the right kind of uh, write up that would constitute an extramural project? So any extramural project when it is being submitted to a funding agency where you are giving public money for research depends on the capability of an investigator. It depends on competence of an investigator and also depends on the research focus of an investigator. So most of these research funding are investigator driven. So you have to be extremely competent in what you do. Teaching is one, research is another thing. So you really have to put in when you write a project, a very compelling argument that which is based on your prior training that why do you think that you will be successful as an independent investigator? Why should the government give you public funds to do research? And what is your originality? What is your core competence, right? So what is your core, core competence, your outstanding research problems that has to be built in your extramural project? And finally, you cannot have a research focus, which is 10 year old. So your research focus always have to be contemporary. It has to be always aligned to certain things, national missions, for example. And it could be of the value of contemporary. I mean, it could be of an fundamental nature. It could be blue sky, profound, cutting edge, disruptive, exponential. I mean, all adjectives that you can imagine that could be used to define a research project would come under research focus. And that is where you should be looking at very carefully when you are trying to create a project life cycle, all right? So I'll go through four life cycles of a project, which is which starts with conceptualizing of a project, right? So what, what Paul Dirac, and some of you would know, our physics colleagues would know, Paul Dirac is great physicist, uh, once, uh, once exclaimed rather that the measure of greatness in a scientific idea is the extent to which it stimulates the thought and it opens up new lines of research. So if you come up with a new idea, it should be stimulating for everybody. 
and it should open up new lines of research so therefore next 5 to 10 years you are engaged in solving that problem so not uh, so you don't want to work on certain uh, short term projects but you have to work on a long term imaginative project which can take you from 5 to 10 years of deep research where you can invest yourself invest your energy your students future to coming up with a with an excellent project and for creating a project for conceptualizing a project the ideas and concepts are extremely critical right and so is the originality of the problem the no the novelty of your research problem both at the national level and at the global level if 100 people are doing the same work your research idea is not novel and there is a great likelihood that it may not even get funded right but it has if it is beautiful if it is you know beautifully original it is well taken and and that would sort of uh, bring you bring us to the discussion of how would you conceptualize so you can think of a research problem choose a research problem that is going to be initiation the overview of work is important you have to know what are the gap areas where you can fulfill some knowledge and then you have to create the idea so ideation has to come with the problem statement ideation will also come from short and long term objectives which are part of your research problem which are then which is going to then require articulation in in simple words yet impactful where you are going to intertwine your objectives and connect the gap areas right and then you elaborate then you fill up the pages that what is your experimental plan how you would use the methodologies available in your laboratory or otherwise what would be the supporting experiment studies computations what not that are going to be used up for elaboration of your research problem and that part would be the conceptualization and some of you may have this doubt in mind that how do you look for a research problem right i'm sitting uh, happily in my office uh, after my lecture should i read more should what what can i do to to create or search for a research problem so the first is that you have to i mean a research problem could be hypothesis oriented and i won't read everything but hypothesis means you think of a an idea you say okay this might happen this is my hypothesis and you create a whole project around it right you can think of innovation okay if a certain research or certain uh, product is being created this way can i innovate with my knowledge and bring it to certain level of maturity that is innovation that is innovative idea as i had mentioned that it has to be modern it has to be non incremental means no short steps you have to take really long steps when you talk about you know suitability of a proposal and the proposal should be risky if you can tell if i use these two methodologies A, a third methodologies would come a third methodology would come up if it is predictable then it is better avoided so you have to avoid routine and predictable proposals they have to be risky in nature sufficiently difficult so that people get impressed right and you have to create a signature people should know that who this person is from your mm -hmm. research work all across india in your city in your institution you know whichever level you are working at people should just look at you and say that okay this guy is working on a particular outstanding research problem and 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 that is how it is it should be and that is how you bring yourself up to a level above right so other sources of ideas and problems you read you read 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 you have to read quite a bit right you have to attend lectures by experts not only in your area but even otherwise uh, you have to look at theoretical propositions and some long standing unsolved research problems and then you have to look at are there any research calls in an area so top down calls so agency has said okay why don't you work on transparent photovoltaics and then you fire yourself up you write a proposal around a top down call or you look at national missions or international research synergies if you can contribute and bottom line being your idea should be relevant it should be contemporary or modern in nature you know the second part is that you have now got the idea you have got everything ready with you now you are ready to write a project all right so so santiago ramon cayal is again a nobel laureate in physiology he said all sound all outstanding work in art as well as in science results from immense zeal applied to a great idea so great idea is not enough to paraphrase ramon cayal you really have to have energy you have to put the entire energy that you have in your great idea then and only then 
you are going to justify a research problem and you would have to present uh, evidence-based mechanism or evidence-based uh, concept to win a project, right? So how you would write a project, you have to always keep that who is going to read your project. So somebody is going to review your project. So reviewer is your audience. So you should not be satisfied by yourself. You should be satisfied that how a, a other person is going to look at it. So certain questions have to be answered. Why are you writing the project? What is known about the project? What are the objectives? Don't use technical you know, jargons uh, that are going to confuse people. Simple words, non-jargon, and keep the project duration in mind. Don't propose anything that is going to be finished in 10 years for a three-year project. So the time frame is extremely important. Your idea should be original, and you have to paint a big picture that, OK, if this proposal is going to be accepted by a funding agency, this is what am I, I'm going to deliver. And your world will look different. The area or the, the knowledge domain would look, look different. So that is the big picture. You have to be always aware of it. So finally, what you have to do is that when you are writing or taking a path ahead while writing a proposal, you are going to be convincing. You have to pay attention to problem, plan, methods, and deliverables. And you always should have plan B. What I mean to say plan B is that if you're if you have to tell, you have to tell people that if I'm going to be unsuccessful in what I am proposing, then I do have another plan to execute on this particular research problem that might also give me success. So I'm going to work with this plan A, but I also have a plan B, and that is a very very important aspect to be elaborated in a project. And poorly written good ideas will never be funded. So good ideas need good writing, time being spent in, in a very focused way when, by reading literature, by connecting the right dots. And that is how you would be successful in, in securing a funding. Right? You analyze, because a lot of people are going to read your project. So you do self-assessment. It would be assessed by reviewers. It would be assessed by program advisory committees. So it is always important at every level you do SWOT analysis that what is the strength of my idea? What is the weakness of my idea? The opportunities that I'll bring in or the threats. Is there a, is there a competitor, right? Is there a threat of something going wrong? So SWOT analysis usually helps. And we all do it. Even I do it, it, it the way you would, the way when you, when you would uh, one would write the project, you have to have the SWOT analysis in picture. The stage three is you know, uh, just managing the project. So now you have written, conceptualized, you have written, you have secured funding. How would you manage the project? And th th this is where Barbara Mc McClintock says that you, once, you have, once you have something in hand, once you have a project, and you have this inner knowledge that you are right on the track, you have the right idea, right concept, right management of the project, then all what you would require is just go ahead and do it, right? And that is going to be judged by the performance, what you are going to put with a realistic set of parameters and objectives. And you have to, of course, benchmark and you have to do a lot of things which, is, are, going to, which are going to be used when you manage a project. You would initiate the project. I won't go into the detail because once you have gotten the project, you have to set up the lab, hire students, create the protocols, right? And then you have to plan that how, what kind of uh, activity, what kind of roles would your research group have and what are the timelines available? You would execute the project and never shy from getting mentorship. People who are more clever than you are, they have to mentor you and that is how we succeed in life. That is how we move ahead, right? The, the monitoring is important of the project. Like every three months, you have to check with your student, hey, what's going on? How are we moving ahead with our deliverables, goals, and objectives? So that, that is going to reflect in your performance. And when your project, yep, it's going to be monitored by SCRB or any other funding agency, right? And then you should know how to close a project, right? So you have to consolidate data, write papers, uh, write all documentation, debriefing, and so that you can not only learn what you gain from your current project, but how, how you are going to use the data obtained to write a new project. And that is managing a well-funded project. And this slide is the final slide, at least for conceptualization and implementation, that you start from pre-project ideation. So an idea comes to your mind. It is initiation of a, that you are about to write a project, right? So pre-project initiation. 
then you ignite the project. You talk to people, you read literature, and you write the project and you submit, right? So the final research plan is submitted. That is stage one. You are planning the project, which is shown here. Finalize research plan reading quite a bit and it is submitted that is stage one and the project life cycle has already started right stage one being you have submitted a project and for example if you were to get a project then is that is your stage two which is going to require planning which is going to require execution and modern monitoring not in any particular order it is going to be diffused so that while you are reaching the stage three the final step of your project you should have taken care of methods. You should have iterated methods, something not working. You have to try in five different ways, right? So that you achieve your objectives from available resources. Your deliberation, you re your recalibration, right? So say after one and a half years of your project, if you think the things are not working at all, right? You have to recalibrate. Where have I gone wrong? Where I can, where can I make corrections, course correction to, to go ahead with the right kind of preparation? All that would be coming under stage three. And finally, uh, the PI and team is responsible for certain activities with the help of right work plan. And you are going to look at the project completion at the end of your tenure. So this slide basically shows you that how you are going to put together you know, years or months of your hard work, starting from ideation all the way to you know, getting a project execution and culmination of a project so that you are now poised to go for the second cycle or the sec subsequent cycle of funding. So with all this, what I have shown with the national missions, the support that we provide, ACRB is looking at science, technology, and innovation preparedness so that the future impact is going to be so wonderful for our country, right? That we achieve science and technology leadership at the world level. And you'll be very happy to know that we are at the moment ranked number Three, right? We are at the third position when it comes to the, the number, the quantity of papers published in SCI journals. And that is already quite remarkable. And we would like to, to sort of catapult to a new league with the right kind of STI preparedness. So we will bring in the right kind of SNT leadership, focus sectoral growth. So not only to IT sector, but science, astrophysics, environmental science, biotechnology, all sectors are to be looked at with equal equal possibility so that they all grow together and we have the focus on the growth of these sectors through very dedicated funding and what we are going to do is that i mean for such a thing we have to have the science and technology right kind of budget and you would be very uh, again proud to know that our government for the last seven years we have tripled the budget of science and technology three times three times growth in science and technology budget budget so right now is the time to get into the act, get into action and seek your share of pie of the science and technology budget so that not only you can reskill or upskill yourself but you create or you help the nation create the right kind of skill work workforce and create the intellectual capital that is going to be necessary to catapult us to the next league of nations who are totally you know uh, uh, confident about their science about this technology and about their innovation which is going to be used in translation which is going to be used in startup and our industries so with these words i would like to thank all of you uh, by a simple quote quote by a ray kurzweil who i really admire much he's a futurist and he told some time back that if i take 30 steps linearly so if you are want to step to take the steps linearly you will take 30 steps right but if you were to exponentially take steps e to power 30 right so if you were to be taking these steps exponentially, you would get to a billion. It's such a powerful quote. So don't walk in a straight line. You try to walk, you take, try to take steps ahead so that that is going to take you to a certain level of maturity. And that would be really helpful for, the, for your own growth, for the growth of science and technology, for the growth of innovation, and whatever else is going to be diffusing out of the efforts that come out of uh, uh, your R&D efforts. So I'd like to thank you. Just the lights, last three slides to tell you that I not only talk about uh, policies and funding, but I am also equally passionate about research. And Professor Gupta was talking about three research areas of my own that I uh, work in IIT Kanpur. I have about 14 PhD students and about seven postdocs. So 21 of us, and if you count me, who doesn't do too much of bench work, 
So what we do is we work on tissue engineering and bio-inspired material. So there's a whole lot of, you know, biology that goes on in my lab where we are looking at quite a number of structures, quite a number of tissues, stem cells, and we try to engineer them. We try to create bio-inspired materials out of our knowledge that we have generated for the last 20 years or so. And of course, despite being busy with, with administrative work, we keep on publishing. That, that, that march cannot stop. Publication has nothing to do with my work in Delhi. So the, the lab in Kanpur has to run without any uh, difficulty. I also, or my lab also works on chemical neuroscience where we are engaged through computational models with the help of experimental models where we use live neurons to work, to rewire the neurons that are responsible for Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease. And as you would see that we also been contributing quite significantly in the best journals possible in recent times. And that is one of the very sort of uh, area of area of research that is close to my heart the chemical neuroscience and one recent foray that we have made in antibiotic design and some of you may be aware of multi-drug resistant bacteria and we are committed to solving this problem at least at our level and we work on new antibiotics new structures new mechanisms that can you know take care of such kind of pathogens and again yeah, uh, if you can see my pointer, we have been talk, uh, uh, working in the area of infectious diseases, again, through both experimental, and I assure you, we do a lot of computations. So both experimental and computations come up with the strategies that are going to be useful for uh, new antibiotic designs. And this, with this particular uh, slide, I stop here, and I'm going to uh, come back to all of you with my slides. And I thank you, thank all of you for sparing your time, for staying, staying with me uh, this afternoon for the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Verma. This is uh, Siddharth Mishra, uh, Associate Professor in Department of Life Sciences, CSJM University, and uh, in Hello. charge IQAC. So I'm very much enlightened and highly thankful to you for your deliberation. And I, I also I would like to add one thing that your one of his student, K.B. Joshi, has been my colleague at Dr. Hari Singhor University, Sagar. Yes. I have recently moved to this place. So, uh, so knowing your status and your dynamism, I'm very happy with that. And uh, the forum is open for discussion. And uh, I I'm seeing Professor Malhotra is there. So maybe we can have we can start a discussion here. And there are some queries which I can read for them. So uh, if any query is there, somebody uh, somebody wants to ask something, please switch on your mic and camera and put your question directly. And later I will read some questions which are in the chat box. So there is one query from um, Dr. Hello, 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 hello. Yes, yes, Dr. Shalini, please continue. Uh, sir, I would like to have a, a question. Uh, question or it's a, it's a query for uh, um, sir. So may I? Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, first of all, greetings and uh, uh, thank you for such a very informative talk for all of us. And um, um, I would like to know about sir that you have told us that the sir power fellowship i am an assistant professor in department of biotechnology csjm university and uh, you, uh, uh, you have said about that sir power fellowship so i would like to know sir is this program or is this um, uh, this program is open throughout the year or is there any deadline or is there any some uh, stuck criteria for to apply for this fellowship so uh, what I can, I mean, it's, it's a uh, great question because it is designed for our uh, researchers, female researchers. So you are welcome to go to our website, SCRB website. It is through a call that is made once a year. And as mm -hmm. far as I remember, the call is either open or it is about to be open for Sir Power Fellowship. So you can use both the Sir Power grants as well as mm -hmm. Sir Power Fellowship or application or for your own contribution uh, to get yourself judged. And mm -hmm. I welcome your nomination from your institute. You can put mm -hmm. in a project through our online system. So most mm -hmm. of you, whoever is interested, first you make your profile 
on SERP online because everything is going to happen through online system. And you are quite yes. welcome to go through the website, read the deadlines, talk about, uh, uh, read the deadlines, and also the terms and conditions for Power Fellowship. That are those are also available in detail on our website. And if you have any question, you are welcome to send me a mail. I'll get you connected to the right scientist, who Dr. Monica Agarwal, who handles uh, Power Fellowship. Sir, can I have your email ID? You can get it from SCRB website. Uh, so okay. uh, it is secretary at scrb.gov.in. Okay, okay, okay. The contact okay. details of Sir are already available on the SCRB website, and that would be yes. official communication. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, Sir. Thank you so much. Sure. Quite welcome. It is a part can I put the question? Yes, Professor Sulkia, please continue. Uh, sir, Namaskar. Uh, I'm Sovigya Amasti. I'm a professor in the um, Department of Business Administration at CS University, Kanpur. So, is there like, um, is SERB uh, uh, there to flourish uh, um, uh, like scholarships for interdisciplinary, the, uh, the researchers, those are interdisciplinary in nature? Like, um, if we uh, join hands with biosciences or maybe uh, like um, engineering, uh, um, any of the professors of engineering, can that be um, encouraged? Uh, or uh, uh, we have to have the whole solely um, coming up with something, uh, something new well. Uh, thank you for your question, Namaskar. Uh, so, uh, for uh, Colleagues who are in business or who are, if you have anything that requires computation, for example, if you are doing research, which is mathematics oriented, we have an excellent program called as matrix. I did not talk about it, but in matrix program, you can even as a business uh, faculty, you can bring in data, you can bring in mathematics based approaches by collaborating with whoever you wish to, right? And you can submit a proposal under SERB matrix program. And you are quite welcome, as you mentioned, that you can also get connected to, to right colleagues to create an interdisciplinary program. We, we support interdisciplinary activities. As, as I just mentioned, we started a new program, quantitative social science, right? So even there, if you have management questions, which can be solved by data, which can be uh, where you can bring together colleagues from economics, econometrics, or mathematics and business uh, a supply chain. You name it, right? If you can package it well, which has data, you are welcome to put it under QSS, which is quantitative social science, or serve matrix program, which has to do with data and anything that has to do with data. So please have a look at these two possibilities. And if uh, you have any doubt, you can again, you can approach us. Uh, so one more question, like, uh, uh, and, uh, as I saw you uh, talked about cluster. So the cluster can be from any of the screens. You can join hands that we can spread the screen. You can have the engineering branch. You can have a uh, space. Okay. Because is, uh, is there, you cannot all uh, equipment is there and uh, a researcher uh, 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 Madam, I am unable to hear you. So now can you hear me? It is better, slightly better, yes. So now can you... Yes, it is slightly better. So now is it... Is it okay, sir? Uh, no, I cannot. Unfortunately, I am unable to. Siddharth, sir, please mute your microphone. So now it's... Now, sir, is it better? Yes, it is better. Yes, it is better. It is yeah. better. Please go ahead. Yeah. So as as you talked about cluster, uh, like uh, groups can be there. So can can we go on for for uh, you know uh, different kind of clusters, say uh, um, not related disciplines, but uh, maybe Sanskrit or maybe mechanical or maybe management or say say um, some other geography. We can have that cluster, and can we go for? Uh, uh, say matrix or maybe some 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 other um, some other uh, focus uh, focused approach of yours whatsoever it is. So uh, again, that's a good question. So may I suggest, uh, ma'am, uh, that you look at uh, our portal, which is 
which I had pointed out, prism dot serb online dot in right so there based on keywords you can search what kind of clusters or what kind of collaborative proposals have been supported so far we have a program on earth and atmospheric science where geography is also represented so you have to look at all the programs you have to look at the competence that you want to bring together to write a collaborative project and i'm pretty sure you would find one or the other program where this competence can be blended and, uh, and a competitive proposal can be submitted under one of the verticals that are present with us. So you please have a look at it. If you have any doubt, you are again welcome to contact us. I'll be able to put you through that to write colleagues who would be able to answer your detailed question as well as give you pointers how to create these clusters within the ambit of SCRB. Is that is that OK? Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank sure, you so sure. much. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Sir, if you permit me, I would like to show some slides of my proposal. Uh, I, for what? For proposal, is your proposal? Uh, no, uh, no ma'am. It's not, it's not a problem because I, we cannot make a judgment here. Uh, but no, you no, can no, send no. a mail. Uh, uh, no, uh, even uh, sorry to interrupt, but even I would like to say that uh, this is not a right platform to submit or discuss about individual proposals. Individual is yes, yeah. uh, But of course, uh, you can uh, communicate through the official email ID of sir uh, via uh, SERB. That would be even appropriate, and uh, some secretary person will assist you in that. That will be better way. But if you if you have a general question, madam, yes, that, that, I, yes, yes, yes please submit. It. Please submit. Okay. Okay. So I want to uh, have a proposal uh, that is uh, on the parasites. Uh, just a minute, sir. Bio invasion of parasitic pathogens into inland aquatic ecosystems. So I, I think such and type of proposal would go to our life sciences uh, program advisory committee. Uh, we have three life uh, three, okay. three okay. we have three life sciences uh, committees. One is organismal and evolutionary biology. One is uh, interdisciplinary health science, and one is you know normal cell and molecular biology. So you can look at the scope of these three verticals, and I think okay. it would go in uh, organismal biology. So anything which, which has to do with parasites can go to organismal biology. Sir, so okay. Professor Sandeep Malhotra is here, and uh, he will associate with me, and um, uh, he's. Uh, he has several years of experience on uh, parasitology and sure, sure. He, has, he had many projects. He has worked on many projects and uh, um, uh, uh, gained funds from uh, DST, DBT and so on, funding, ag funding agencies. And we have publications in several uh, reputed journals uh, such as uh, uh, publishers like Elsevier and CRC sure. publications, etc. And we want to work on uh, parasites uh, which are found in the uh, riverine and uh, riparian um, wetlands. And yeah, it's okay, it's okay, ma'am. So it should be just packaged as a project in a given format, and we will be able to judge it. So, so it's it's so so, so please open an account on Serb online, and it has to be online transacted. And you're quite okay. welcome to uh, use the life sciences PAC for submission of your project, and we'll be able to review. Yes. All okay. good luck to you, you and okay. Professor. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So Thank much. you so much. So uh, there were some queries in the chat box that I can read, and maybe I can answer it, sir. Somebody has asked that: Is there any specific program for self finance scheme faculty? So I think rather uh, I can answer myself that. Uh, uh, anybody can go to the SERP website and each and every program has a very clear eligibility criteria and each and every program has different criteria. 
So it would be better to please choose a program, check the eligibility criteria, suitability as per your research work, and then proceed for application. Because it's not a general query, so it, it has to be program specific. So uh, I'm suggesting, Dr. Vinay Kumar Sachan had submitted this question. So I'm suggesting him and others also. So please check the each program's eligibility and accordingly proceed for application. There is another question whether is there any program which awards doctoral degree? So I think in that case, uh, uh, we, we, we are not yes. degree granting yes. institution. It's just a support. But uh, Dr. Mishra, I mean, I, I was very happy to see one comment in the chat box by Dr. Surendra Preet e. Singh. He is from DAV College, uh, Kanpur University. Uh, yes, yes. Sir. yes sir. He says that his Sir Tare proposal is accepted. This, this is a wonderful program. And his SRG grant, which is a startup research grant, is also accepted. So, so I wish more such colleagues would come uh, sir, to even, SCRP. And even I'm an applicant of Sir Tare program. OK, perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Could I kindly come in? Sir, please, please. Oh. I wish to submit that now that you have ignited those younger brains, Professor Verma has put it beautifully, all the networkings and the SERB system. The, the, the youngster would have a hitch to frame the final proposals. And if our interactive sessions could have been frequent, we would be encouraging these youngsters to perhaps put their thoughts before the audience. And maybe some creative suggestions would help them to formulate the final project. Because what, what I think stops them is to formulate a final proposal, what will be funded, what is the shortcoming. And uh, I think if we can meet after 20 days or on a, once in a month, uh, those youngsters who have some idea, and it's a brilliant idea, of course, but is hesitant to put it forward on a framework of SERB format. Maybe he's encouraged, he or she, if we discuss it threadbare, and several of such kind of ideas would come up and maybe they develop collaborations right here and finally they formulate and submit it to SCRB. If you could comment on this kind of proposal. Uh, SCRB won't be able to do it because it is going to be conflict of interest, right? Uh, there are say 10,000 universities across the country and so many institutions, departments. So we cannot be doing it for individuals but what is important for us to realize your question and your suggestion is extremely valuable that yes, uh, we have to handhold youngsters in the early phase of their career. So what you can instead do is, you know, create a uh, sort of a R&D platform where you can think about senior investigators who have excellent experience in getting projects from DBT, SCRB and other you know, funding agencies, say from within IIT Kanpur or DMSRD, they have been getting a lot of funds from us. You could have a brainstorming every three weeks or every month. That is more useful. And SERB will not do it because, again, you would be submitting it to us and we will be guiding you. That is a conflict of interest. So your point is well taken. I think uh, some of you should devise such strategy of meeting often and creating the right ambience for your young, co young colleagues to get proper training in getting a impactful proposal ready. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would not mind whether it is SCRB or uh, Kanpur University or IIT yeah, Kanpur yeah. or whichever. But yeah, yeah. I'm happy you could follow my proposal. And this is what is the hitch in the minds of youngsters. That we, you have ignited those things very nicely. And they would be coming up with the right ideas. But they are to put it in the streamline, they would need some certain trimming kind of activity. Thank you so much. Actually, just last point to your question. We have recently organized uh, a proposal writing workshop, a three-hour workshop, just how to write a proposal. So what is important is that all the younger colleagues who are interested in, in submitting a proposal, they have to continuously look at our website that what is latest, what are the workshops that are of interest to us, can we participate? So that is important. So you make yourself aware of uh, all the future programs and take benefit from them. We have done it, I think, two months back. We did such a program through SCRB, Project Writing Workshop. That's right. Ji. 
So uh, I think there are no more queries and I'm very sure your time is very valuable and we are very much thankful to you, Professor Sandeep Verma, sir, for joining with us and such a uh, elaborate del deliberation. Of course, we are preparing for project submission and we are trying to enhance our academic curriculum so that our uh, studies can be research oriented. And hopefully we will be submitting more projects to different funding agencies, primarily to serve we are submitting. And we are very much thankful to you, sir, for uh, kindly gracing this occasion and such a nice deliberation. So on behalf of our university uh, and our administration and on behalf of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Vinay Kumar Pache, on behalf of the research and development cell, the internal quality assurance cell, and on my own behalf, I'm thanking you for such nice presentation and deliberation. I'm thanking all the respected members, deans and directors who have joined here, the other faculty members from different institutions like Professor Sandeep Malhotra, Professor Mirza Kapoor, and other head and head, head of the department's faculty members. And with your permission, sir, uh, uh, maybe we can close this call and we shall be connected for that. So if right, you allow right. me. So thank, thank you so, so much, much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. It was a nice program. Thank you so much.